Hi, and welcome to the very first video tutorial on Brent Galloway.me with me, Brent Galloway, freelance graphic designer. And in today's tutorial, I wanted to show you a step-by-step -step guide on how to design a scratched aluminum button in Photoshop. When you're designing for the web, there are buttons everywhere. You click probably hundreds, thousands a day. Buttons are essential to all the user interfaces, so why not make them look awesome? So I'm going to show you how to use alignment, some subtle textures, and some simple layer styles to make an awesome looking button. So let's just go ahead and begin. I'm going to create a new document. I'm going to keep it at a 400 by 300 size file. Uh, you can do whatever you'd like. I just This is actually the size for uh, a dribble shot. So I'm just going to design it in this. And for this design, I'm going to go for a really dark look. So I'm going to unlock the background and I'm going to fill it with black. Not only am I going to fill it with black, but I'm going to add a subtle texture. So I'm going to just double click the layer, go into pattern overlay, and I will select my background texture and click OK. And the reason why I'm using this texture is because it really helps turn a flat dead design to something noticeable and alive. Now we're going to go back to the basics of design and that's going to be alignment. Um, I use guides in everything I design. It, it makes everything pixel perfect. And to make these guides, all you do is you have your rulers on, which is a command or control R to hide or show them. And then you just click, hold, and then you drag it down. I like to do a guide all the way around the base, and the si all around the sides of the document, and then um, vertically and horizontally centered. And this will come handy later, and I'll show you. But not only am I going to add a guide uh, for the document itself, but I'm going to do the dimensions of the button we're going to be creating. And for the button dimensions, I'm going to do a, a just a simple 250 by 60 pixel. So if you grab your guide and go to the center of the document, we're going to go up 30 pixels because this, this is going to be the center of the button. Uh, so we're going to go 10, 20, 30. Again, center, 10, 20, 30. And the great thing about guides is that they snap to each other. So once you kind of get used to using them, uh, you can get really precise with them. And then we're going to going to do a 250 pixel wide button. So we'll start from the center, and we need to go left and right 125 pixels. So we go 100, and then 10, 25, and then to the right 100, 10, 25. There we go. Now let's actually create the base of the button so I can show you why these guides are useful. So I'm going to use the rounded rectangular tool, which is U. I'm just going to use a radius of 4 uh, and make the background color of it white just so I can see it on this dark background. So it will snap to the grid that we just created. And then you can hide the guide with command semicolon. And then click off of that layer so you get rid of the, uh, the outline of the shape. Now if we zoom in here, we will get the pixel grid, which is something you should always zoom in and check if you're going for a pixel perfect design. Uh, and you see that right here you have these transparent pixels on the rounded edge. You don't want that on your straight corners. Um, and this just makes it so it's really crisp and not blurry. So let's just zoom back out. And let's start throwing some layer styles onto this bad boy. Or button. So the first thing we're going to add is just a very dense drop shadow. Uh, we want the lighting to come from above. So if you hold shift, you have this thing lock on to these instead of just kind of getting in between. So we'll just lock and go up to 90 degrees. And then we'll change the distance to 2 and the size to 3. And you can see from the preview or from the button itself that you get a really nice, uh, subtle, dense shadow. The next thing we're going to do is, is we're going to actually add that texture to it. So again, we're going to use a pattern overlay. And you're probably wondering where I get all of these preset patterns from. Um, I get them from a website called subtlepatterns.com. They have so many, they add them all, they add new ones all the time. Um, I would highly recommend downloading them and you can actually download the, uh, the Photoshop file so you can just have them in here preset. Um, and they're all repeatable. So they're great for backgrounds and using them for textures on all your designs. Um, and for this tutorial, we're going to use the brushed aluminum dark. And then the final layer style we're going to do is a, not final actually, we're going to be using a gradient overlay. 
and we're gonna put the blend mode to multiply. Reason being is it's gonna kind of ignore the white part of the gradient, um, and this will help give lighting to the button. We're gonna put the opacity at 25, so it'll be very subtle, but it'll really help. These subtle details really help it uh, look alive. And then the final style is gonna be a bevel and emboss. Uh, we wanna go for a really tight and crisp design, and so set the size to zero. And you'll see we get this one pixel highlight above, um, and we do not need the shadow on it at all. Click OK, and we now have the base of the button styled. So finally, let's go ahead and add the text to it. Switch on your guides with command semicolon. Pull out your text tool. I'm going to use Gotham Medium um, at a, not really bold, and I'm just going to use the word portfolio. And for the color of the text, we're not going to use straight white. I'm going to use a little bit off-white, so I'm just going to use basically all E's. It gives it this off-white. You can see here's white and here's the off-white we're going to be using. And this will help because later we're going to um, give it a layer style uh, to go with the lighting of the button. And again, here's where the guides come in handy. You'll see it snaps to the center horizontally and vertically. And we can go ahead and hide those. Just double click your layer style, your layer, and open up the styles. And we're gonna add a drop shadow to it. Again, we want something really dense, but not um, as big as what the button drop shadow is. So we're gonna go one pixel smaller. We're gonna go one on the distance and two on the size. And then finally, we're gonna do another gradient overlay. This time we're gonna use screen, and this it's gonna ignore the black part of the gradient. Uh, and just keep the opacity up at 100. Click OK, and there you have it. With the combination of alignment, subtle textures, and some very simple layer styles, we're left with one sexy scratched aluminum button. Thanks for watching the video, I appreciate it. Again, I am Brent Galloway, freelance graphic designer, and if you like this video, you can comment, leave your suggestions, or maybe some ideas of what you'd like to see next. Thank you, and have a great day.